go through a number of steps and they're fairly, uh, they mostly go in order. Uh, so a dev release is followed up by an alpha release and these releases aren't feature locked. Again, the beta release, it's before we're essentially feature locked, uh, but it's moving closer to a stable release. Following that, we enter into a, a release candidate cycle and we have three or four of these and they're, they're closely together, you know, a couple of weeks. We try and get those out um, just to get bugs out. No feature changes are, are done in that release cycle. And then we hit stable after that. Uh, there can be patches following that if necessary. Uh, at the moment, we have released a dev release, uh, so that's available for you to get. If you do want to have a look at it, though, I suggest you grab the 2.0 branch itself. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, fixes and changes since the dev and the 2.0 branch is um, it's actually uh, stable enough to run something prototype-ish on. Uh, I wouldn't put it on your production site just yet because things can change. Uh, we're actually using it for our live.kphp.org website, for example. Uh, so grab the code from GitHub uh, or head to kphp.org. There's links from there and the branch you want to use is 2.0. Any questions, comments? The third is optional. Yes. Um, it, it's hard to put a deadline on anything. It's hard to put a timeline on things when we're still dis discussing what features are going to be included in the release. Um, so, but I, I would very much hope that sooner rather than later, because we have been talking about and building on 2.0 for a while. But um, we we don't really give out times or dates for uh, for any of the releases. We just work as much as we can to get those done. Um, yeah, sorry about the vague answer, but they're done when they're done. Like Steve Jobs. <laughs> well, the promise I give everyone, and I'll give it again here, is that it will be released extremely shortly after it's ready. And I promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yes? What kind of performance increase did you see moving to Nginx from Apache? Okay, um, not specifically Cake, but one that I'm interested in. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, well, Apache was a long time ago. We moved away from it, um, 2008, I think. Uh, the server we were on, and I, I won't go into the details of the server, I think it was four gig of RAM and four processors, um, but it was basically getting to the point where we needed to buy a new server. Uh, this is a dedicated box. Um, we moved to Lighty, and that took the load down by about half. And that was great. And then we started building out things like you know, a bakery that had much better translation features and were more accessible to the Japanese specifically. There are lots of other languages in there. Uh, we built out a TV site. There's a lot, lots of sites we started building out and growing the community a lot more. It started loading up the server again. Uh, we moved to, uh, I mean, talking about loads like over 20. So an, a, con a consistent over 20 load is something that you should probably be worrying about. Uh, and we did, and we went and talked to Rackspace, who gave us a, a nice server. So that cut our costs, uh, but it was, it's the same server specs, essentially. Uh, moving to Nginx, our load is below one all the time. Uh, and it's, we're increasing our load on the, uh, in terms of users coming in, looking at pages and, and content and so forth all the time. So right now, there's, there's heaps of people who have been hitting the live site. And uh, beyond that, people sort of generally go to the TV side off from there, and they look at documentation. So right now, it's going to be packed. But I can guarantee, going back through the logs, it's still going to be sitting below one. Um, Nginx is a good start to performance uh, for your server. But PHP FPM does a lot of the, the heavy lifting as well. So it's just the best combination that I can find at the moment is those two. So. Um, do you know how many? How many requests per second handle the um, request, not assets? Or okay, well, the only stats I have sort of off the top of my head is going off the stats we're looking at the other day when our analytics were playing up. We're looking at 300,000 requests per hour, and that was loading our server completely. If uh, you do the math, that's like 20, uh, sorry, 90 requests per second. Assets, you know, or is that no, without assets, okay. just PHP. Yeah, so every, we're, we're actually not logging asset requests simply because it's a waste of disk space. And that's another optimization you can, ma you can make. So if you're making a disk access and you're writing every single asset access, you're hitting your disk so many times and that's killing your server. So log what's required. If you have to log accesses, then log them, and we, we do. We log them only for uh, PHP files. Anything going through PHP FPM, we'll log. Anything going straight through Nginx, I don't care. So you're running the assets from like a different domain name or like a different? No, it's actually um, we're 
consolidated to um, to two servers at the moment, um, and yeah, pr the primary sites are actually running off one, and the assets are served from the same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a question, maybe like more uh, like from the management perspective. Like we build up this uh, application, it's all cool. We run like a lot of kind of uh, bakery scripts. Uh, to generate a lot of code, mm -hmm. create a lot of tables manually, but uh, are there any like uh, tools to create like, deployment uh, scripts? Like you know, if I like okay, develop this application on my computer, how do I deploy it in production? Okay, Cake was, is designed, I guess, to be as simple as possible, um, but also flexible and very powerful. Um, Cake, you can simply just drop into any publicly accessible directory, and it will serve out its files. So very simple in that sense. Um, there are more advanced, I guess, techniques for deployment. Uh, you should only make the web root directory, uh, which I'll just quickly show you. So where in the root directory we've got So we've got all these these files. We've got a app controller and models, we've got controllers, but over on the bottom right you see web root. And that should be the only web accessible directory, ideally. But you can drop all of this into a publicly accessible um, document root and it will serve just fine. But looking into the web root, we've got index.php and we've got our assets. And that's it. We've got some niceties for CSS uh, generation. Well, like if you want to serve those assets from a different server, for instance. Uh, um, well, I guess. Not to do manual stuff. Like yeah, um, I think that's think. not that's not a problem of deploying. Uh, you you will have to configure your helpers, for instance, to uh, use a round robin technique for serving assets like mm -hmm. images, uh, image one dot kphp.org or something like that. And I guess through the configuration. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, like it's you'll, probably, you'll need to set up a different. Yeah. Uh, as, as for deployment, you could use any other tool that's popular right now, like Capistrano. Uh, you can write your own recipes for Capistrano and deploy KPHP. Uh, one of, of the, the developers of KPHP, Mark Story, in his blog has a very cool recipe for Capistrano for deployment of KPHP that basically will just use Git to deploy onto the server, remove temporal files, uh, change versions and, and stuff. And you maybe can use it then for, for your own deployments. Um, yeah, like my question was more like around like you creating like database tables manually for instance. Uh, well, we have a plugin. The, the, Remember the one which we use for creating the ratings yeah. plugin? Uh, the migrations plugin is just a PHP, a set of PHP classes describing changes from one version to another into the database, like create one field, drop one field, create one table. And you can call this script after deploying your, your files. Uh, it's called cake migration all. It will run all migrations over your database by comparing it, the, the current state, with the state that it should be. But you, so I guess you have to still manually encode like what it should be, right? So uh, mm. what, what you can do is, what we've done, we've gone through and generated these tables. We've, we've done them manually as part of the de development process. Tables change. Yeah. Um, so you build out your database. Getting ready for deployment, what you do is you, you generate migrations for your current database. Okay, deploy so to your so server you and can, run the migrations. So you can generate those migrations. Right. Of course, yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so that's the question. And uh, also, like, uh, the other like, related questions, uh, do, like, uh, you obviously have, like, the model class uh, that, you know, like, all your models uh, kind of, uh, in, like, I mean, derive from. Uh, but can you use uh, certain, like, a standard, like, uh, ORM components, like, you know, like, that. You can use it, of course. You can grab any ORM you, you like. For instance, I've, I've been working on a plugin that uses the Doctrine ODM uh, for MongoDB. And it's almost functional right now. It just grabs the Doctrine o ODM and provides a data source for KPHP. And you can access objects as, as you like and save them. <coughs> Yeah. I think there was a question just up the back there. What do you do inside the CSS library? 
<laughs> that was nothing. It's going to get ripped out. But um, I can give you. I can't, I can't remember the last time I looked at this, to be honest. Um, uh, th this, this was a file. It's not used anymore, to be honest. Uh, to compress CSS files and serve, it, and serve all your CSS files as, as only one asset, as stripping the, the, the white spaces and, and, and stuff. So it combines and compresses all those CSS files. And it'll write caches as well for them, so... Oh right. Um, there's actually um, there's a couple of uh, views that people have view classes that people have created to to specifically generate CSS files with uh, variables. Um, that's again a community contribution. Um, searching the bakery would definitely find it for you, but there are resources out there to do that. Um, yes. Were you going to switch over, uh, over to data map? I thought that was on the roadmap. Uh, it, it is on the roadmap, and it's it's going to be around 2.1 ish uh, somewhere. It's um it's such a big change. Um, if anyone's followed the PHP uh, development, PHP six kind of went uh, by the wayside due to um, I think it was Unicode support. Yeah. Uh, so in in a similar fashion, we're we're not going to hold back a release for a feature. It's a big feature. We want to do it right. Um, but that is coming, and yeah, 2.1 or so. Yes. Uh, nevertheless, uh, with this plugin I'm writing, I'm showing that it's possible to, to grab other ORMs into KPHP and use all the infrastructure it provides without changing much in it. Yeah. So earlier in your slides, you mentioned something about like exception handling in uh, KPHP. Can you elaborate on that? Like, do you guys do something? Like what? Uh, exception handling. Can you elaborate on that 2.0 exception handling? Yeah, you can rely on that. You can throw exceptions anywhere you like, like in your model, like uh, record not found, and catch it using a custom uh, exception handler and render a 404 page or, or whatever you like. Even redirect the user to the home page. Yep. Yeah, just to like, where do you catch uh, you can write the try catches at anywhere you like, depending on your logic. But the custom handlers will be the default, like the last resource thing the, the framework uses. If it's not catching the model, if it's not catching in controller, if it's not catching dispatcher, it will go through uh, to the topmost uh, exception handler and do whatever you like. So you cross the back trace of PHP to trace these back to the errors? Uh, exceptions, all exceptions by default in PHP has a stack trace, so you can uh, show the, the user or developer what's happening. Actually, that's what P KPHP is using right now. If it catches an exception out of control, it will render a hel helpful page, page using the, the stack trace to help the, the developer. I think that might be covering our questions. I think that's it. Well, uh, thank you very much to the KPHP team. <laughs> yeah, we'll have some time to like network if you have any like more questions, so you can kind of ask them personally. Also, we uh, want to do a couple announcements. Uh, first of all, we have. Um, our uh, sister uh, Lampsig group that has their own uh, talk tomorrow, I believe. So uh, we have uh, Jorge from Lampsig. I'll just uh, give a quick uh, announcement. Hello, everyone. My name is Jorge. Uh, I run uh, Lampsig, which is uh, the Los, Los Angeles Special uh, Interest Group. Uh, we're going to have our talk tomorrow at 1 p.m. Uh, the topic is going to be build world-class business applications in PHP and uh, MySQL in three steps. Uh, if you are a beginner developer, you should come. If you are an intermediate developer, you should come. If you are an expert developer, you should come. If you are no developer, you should come. <laughs> And if you, if you run a business, you should also come. I think we'll have some uh, pleasant surprises and uh, a great way of uh, assisting you in improving uh, performance as far as uh, building applications very, very fast. Thank you. Where, what location? 
Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's on Pico around there. I have there, flyers. Right? Okay. Uh, 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 there are flyers around, so like, uh, can I pick it up? I have some flyers around that I feel. Okay. Uh, also, uh, if uh, anyone uh, wants to do any kind of announcements, this is the time, so like, uh, please. Uh, uh, is it good there? My name's uh, Tim Eastman. Um, I'm with a company that uh, we're opening an office called Rentworth, and we've already deployed a Mulan type site in China, Taiwan, and Australia, and um, Hong Kong. And we're looking for a KPHP architect, very high level, to assist our uh, China-based developers. Uh, our entire platform is a KPHP. So if you have any interest in starting immediately, um, stop by and uh, I'll be around and, and let me you know. My name is Todd. We also have... It's more and more common. People looking for... We're profitable. We're, we're actually making... 